Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stands and welcome to Erasmus Hoyland. Absolutely fantastic to have you on the show. I know our audience is going to... We've got a couple of questions from them as well, but this is a big surprise for them to have you on. Uh, first of all, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm good, Mark. How are you? I'm, I'm very, 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 very excited about this interview. Um, we're going to get into it. Now, this is... Um, obviously, you're going to know this because you've played the game. You've actually lived this. But to our audience at home, two years ago, you are at Copenhagen. You signed for Sturm Graz in the January. Yeah, just You're there about, yeah. six months, then Seven, Atalanta. Yeah. And Seven then... months, uh, yeah, Sturm Graz, and 11 months, uh, Atalanta, and now here. And still about to be 21, but, what, I mean, what's that been like as a journey um, over that period of time to, to do that? It's a lot of movement. It's a, an amazing amount of clubs, really. Yeah, it's it's four clubs in, in, in less than in, in two years, so... It's been a lot of transitions, uh, a lot of different leagues, a lot of different languages as well. Um, but yeah, um, I'm here at my favorite club now. And uh, yeah, it's always been my my target to be here. So yeah, I'm happy now. And Manchester United, I mean, it was about this time last year, I think we were talking about it on the United stand that there was scouts looking at you at Atalanta. At what point did you become aware that United were looking at you and how, how did that feel being a Man United fan? Yeah, so... Um, uh, yeah, that was. Um, I started doing very well after the the World Cup, and I think around May probably was where I really f uh, first time heard that there was this um, serious uh, interest in me. And yeah, as you know, I'm a United fan, and it was uh, very emotional for me. But I wouldn't celebrate be before I was there, so I had to do my my final bit of work in in Atalanta and and, and focus there until I knew uh, everything was in place. And then, of course, the unwheeling was uh, incredible at uh, Old Trafford. We were talking there just off camera. I played at Old Trafford. I've, I've, there was no one else there. <laughs> I have got the pictures. I think there's a video out there somewhere. I wasn't fortunate enough to score. But I have to ask this question. I'm sure everyone will want to know the answer. Yeah. Scoring a goal at Old Trafford in front of 75,000 people, what what does that feel like? Can can you put it into words? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very good feeling. I think uh, scoring in front of a stretch front end is uh, is even better. I think um, the most memorable one memorable one for me is probably uh, the second goal uh, against Galatasaray where. I do the celebration towards this restaurant end, which was uh, yeah, very very special for me. Um, um, my son Seb, who people will know, um, he was uh, he was asking about this today, and uh, he said, "Oh, I liked that one he scored against Tottenham. He really smacked that one, didn't he, <laughs> Daddy?" And I went, "Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that that Stratford end again, isn't it? Just absolutely." Track yeah. to foot it with that left foot as well, which I, you know, I've always been a big fan of, of the left foot as well. Yeah, I think the Spurs one was was a nice one early in the game as well. Um, I've had a good run of games now, and uh, also, uh, yeah, uh, I remember that game. I was I was feeling uh, very conf confident and, and comfortable. So, yeah, it was it was just about uh, getting the shot off, and yeah, uh, again, uh, a good memory. Uh, let's talk about the now and Manchester United. Uh, Eric Ten Hag's the coach. Um, as a player, as a, as a young player at Manchester United as well, what's it, what's it like? Um, what's Eric Ten Hag like as a coach, and and how big of an influence did he have on you actually signing for Manchester United? Yeah, he, he had a very big influence uh, in me signing there. I saw what he did uh, the year before, how um, how the offensive players was uh, was playing, and um, how many chances they were creating, and and again. Um, I'm a big United lad, I've always been, so it was a no-brainer for me to come in here and, um, yeah, just wanted to get started. And, yeah, unfortunately, there was a little disturbance in the beginning, but, yeah, um, yeah, I'm just happy now and, yeah, I just want to keep going and try to achieve as much as possible for the rest of the season, really. We've uh, we've listened to Eric talk about you a few times and he's mentioned, um, you know, some of the challenges around a couple of the injuries you've had um, and being only, you know, young yourself and... Uh, it's, it's well documented that there's been a few senior strikers that have left over the years um, and you've found yourself in this position. Um, you've spoken about your mentality. Now, watching you myself, and I think a lot of our viewers would agree, you do show that strong mentality leadership. Is, you know, strikers have to be selfish goal scorers, but as a, as a, do you see yourself as you're developing maybe a future captain, leader of the team? Is that something that, that you take on as well? Because not all players are about that. I don't. I don't really want to talk about that yet. Just yet. Uh, I think I'm still a little bit too young for that. But then again, um, if you're if you're 
yeah, if you're good enough, you're old enough. Um, but right now, I'm more than happy with with our captain group and and these sort of things. But yeah, again, uh, I'm not afraid to 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 tell what I what I mean also to the group. So uh, if, yeah, you never know. Uh, I like to say that I'm I like to show character, um, and that's one of the the things you need for for being a captain. So yeah, maybe maybe in the future. It's uh, yeah, we're certainly not trying to lose Bruno. We've got, <laughs> uh, in our experience as United fans, the great United teams have lots of leaders in them. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, one of the viewers' questions, they won't realise this because I've subtly been asking scenarios around for a while and uh, this works perfectly. So as a striker yourself, you're playing for Manchester United, not this United. What sort of service do you prefer? Would you prefer a David Beckham cross into the box or do you like a Paul Scholes ball, ball in behind? Because you, you, you're the sort of striker that can score both of those sort of goals. Who would, who would you rather have provide, providing service for you? If we're just talking about them two... I think uh, probably poor scores, to be fair. Um, I love uh, a right foot across from the side, but yeah, um, I think he could do do them them uh, no look passes very very nicely to to play in behind. And yeah, I've always always loved the goal where I'm running towards the goal. So yeah, um, yeah, I think uh, poor scores probably. Probably both would be a good answer. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, and you've been a United fan all your life. I mean, we yep. were talking there before that Rasmus would have been five years old when you won it in 2008, which yep. makes me feel really old, <laughs> considering I was old enough to drink when we won it in 99. Okay. But um, who's the who's the most influential player of Manchester United growing up? What was the who, who was your sort of idol growing up? Yeah, so if we talk about that season, it has to be Cristiano. Um, Rooney as well, I'm thinking about. Um, Tevez as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, But Cristiano was probably the guy. And I remember... Um, supporting him and following him the the next year as well in United and following him back again and and watching him in the period where he was in Juventus and Real Madrid as well and yeah he he's always been my idol and I followed the clubs where he's been and 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 supporting United was my first team as really so yeah uh, I'm going to ask you in a moment what your dream Man United five a side would be but we can't include any current players oh. we don't know what, we don't want to say any current players um, but um, before I do that is do you I've, I've got this kit here which I've brought in um, I won't show the price tag because it's very expensive but, okay uh, this is actually um, 1991 Cup Winners Cup oh. uh, Manchester United top uh, no sponsor on it because you weren't allowed them in those days apparently but um, what what would be your most memorable kit favorite kit sort of growing up can you remember any yeah it has to be i was just doing an, an interview in the other side um where i had to show that my first united kit which was with the black one with um yeah i can't remember which which season it was but uh yeah a black kit was that when we had ronaldo i think so yeah, yeah. i remember the one you yeah. About. yeah 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 uh i think it was the third kit probably yeah 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 it was my first jersey so i think that one's probably very special to me and then the red one from the same season as well yeah it was okay. my first two yeah. Um, the, it was the away kid and then the blue one was the third, wasn't it? Yes, that was a nice one. Yeah. That was the real royal blue one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a nice kit. Um, so before I ask you about the five aside, yeah. um, what's uh, social media? You know, obviously United stands classed as social media. Mm. As a young player yourself, you, you have that and you've moved to a massive club like Manchester United. Um, and I think we're all very aware of the impact that social media can have. Um, how does how, how does it impact on you as a, as a younger player? Is it something you take notice of? Do you, do you ignore it? Like you say, I think we. I'm probably from the from the generation where social media is um, quite in quite uh, familiar, and you've grown up with it and and these sort of things. But then again, you have to sort out in in the good things and the bad things because when, of course, when you're scoring a goal or you're making assist and you're winning, uh, most of the times it's. It's positive and and it's very good, but then again, when when you're when you're not scoring and and when you when you're in a bad period, then it's gonna be most of the time hate. So you have to sort out, and you know it's it's up and down football the entire entire time, and yeah, you just have to yeah sort it out really. Yeah, I try I try not to to do do anything really. I don't really look at it because yeah, you can be too happy and you can be. You can be negative influenced by it as well. So I just try to stay away from it, really. I think that's the most important thing and just try to focus every day on, on being a better player. And as long as I know I'm training good and, and doing my best, I think I can't really do anything more. 
very good advice. Yeah. I, 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 I'm on social media myself. I tend to just put a post out, say something <laughs> controversial, and I'll never look at the replies. And you never know then. You just assume everything's being good. Um, and Rasmus, you've, you've moved to Manchester. You're adjusting to that life. Um, what, what, what do you do off, you know, when you're off training, you're, yeah. you're not playing games? What's, 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 what's the sort of things do you like to do to sort of relax in your own time? Um, yeah, what do I do? I play PlayStation. Yeah, a lot to be fair. Um, but I'm also I'm a yeah, golfer. Good. Yeah, I'm okay. You've seen, you've seen, you've seen me. I'm pretty good. The career mode thing, or yeah, career mode. Okay. You're doing very well on my career mode. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, oh, okay. you went to Spurs. I didn't even know you had a release clause. Mm. I had to buy you back. Cost me loads <laughs> of money, but it's been worth it. Yeah, okay. Um, you haven't got a release clause here, have you? Oh, I'm not letting okay. something out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Career mode myself, FIFA Ultimate Team. Um, Call of Duty, Fortnite, um, GTA as well. So yeah, yeah everything really. Um, and then my girlfriend is living with me, you know. Uh, she moved in now during the winter here. So um, she gave me yeah, stability. We go out and eat once in a while and yeah, just relax. Enjoying Manchester yeah. life. Yeah, Manchester it's, yeah, it's good. It's good. Don't live inside the city, but um, yeah, it's it's a good area and in, in around uh, Hale and, and these Altrincham and and uh, Old Liege. So it's a good area. We're going to do it now. Your yeah. Manchester United. It's going to be big. Five a side team. And I can't pick any current players, no. No current players. Mm -hmm. And uh, I actually think we might disagree <laughs> on this one. But uh, go on then. Who, 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 well, who are you going to go with your five? Yeah, like I need people? to put Peter in goal. Yeah. Um, Peter, because Peter's Peter. Peter is Danish. Peter, Peter won everything here. Peter is a legend here, but he's also a legend in Denmark because he won the Euros with us and for us. Um, so he has to be there. I need to put Rio in there because he's very memorable to me. Um, I would love to put Vidic there, but I can only have one defender, only one. I know you might be only offense, but I need I need some stability in the back. I want to put uh, Ryan Giggs in there, um, Paul Scholes, and then uh, Christian Offrand. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I, 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 I slightly disagree. That's you had to might have seen before. That's the good I'm, thing about football. I'm binning off defenders, don't need them by the side. <laughs> and I'd go Vidage over Rio anyway. Sorry. Fair enough. Fair but enough. I'm, I'd go, I agree with you on Schmeichel. Yeah. I'll go Keane, Scholes. Yeah. Okay. Because Rooney and Ronaldo. So you do Keane like a holding. Yeah. Okay. Fair. He's yeah. You can do that. Sure. Keen Skulls, Ronaldo, and Rooney. Because mm. Rooney. Yeah, I know. He's got yeah. everything. Yeah, in. yeah, he does. And he can defend as well. So, yeah, I'm sure. So, it's what was your team? Yeah, so I, I had Peter in goal, and then Rio, and then left. Um, Giggs. Giggs, and then Skulls, and then Cristiano. Mm. So, you still, you still get a balanced midfield, and then you can just leave him up front. Yeah. Let us know in the chat who you think has got the better team. Left foot on the left. Don't just pick Rasmus because he's our star striker. Come on, be fair on it. Um, Rasmus, it's been an absolute pleasure having yeah, you on nice. the show. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Yeah, and nice. uh, all the best for the rest of the season. Thank you. Uh, get your comments in below. Lots to get in there. Big shout out to Rasmus. And uh, let's hope that uh, he can keep scoring goals in the second half of the season. I hope so. Take care, everyone. Speak to you on the next one.